Now let's find out what's going on in the world of politics. We're joined now by Shadow Secretary of State for Women and Equalities, Annalise Dodds. A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Annalise, I, I just wondered if you were listening to the newspaper review there and the, the glowing tributes that the former Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, uh, was getting from our reviewers. And um, <laughs> Joanna Hare was having... Just explain, just explain to Annalise your problem with Gavin Williamson and his knighthood. Well, my big problem is that he was kept... That children across the country were kept out of school for two years uh, with no, no evidence. We knew from the very start of the pandemic that primary school children in particular weren't huge transmitters of COVID and uh, COVID posed very, very little risk to children themselves. But I have to say to um, Annalisa that unfortunately the Labour Party don't have a terribly a good basis for opposing this because they also agreed that schools should close and were calling for children to stay at home for, well, the best part of two years of disruption uh, okay. that children faced. Give the woman a chance to answer. <laughs> here, here we go now. There's the accusation, Annalise. Yeah, I obviously don't agree with Joanna at all. I think anyone looking at this knighthood for Williamson will be absolutely flabbergasted. There are so many people in our country who performed great acts of heroism and sacrifice over the last two years. My goodness, Gavin Williamson was not one of them, and he made the situation for so many people a lot harder. I mean, one of many problems during his tenure as Education Secretary was the fact that when schools did close on the basis of public health advice, he didn't provide the materials for those schools and for those kids to be able to learn. You know, the laptops were not distributed. We all remember those days when we had school after school after school warning that they could not provide that education to kids, that promises were being made by Gavin Williamson in London, and very, very little was then getting out to the schools themselves. Let's not forget also the shambles of that scheme to get food to children who were on free school meals. We all remember about that, what a mess that was in for so many weeks and ultimately months. You know, Williamson has a lot of failures sat at his feet. I don't think actually they're related to the public health response to the crisis. I do think they were about his failure as Education Secretary, but also about the whole Conservative government's failure because they should have got rid of him earlier. And to now see him being elevated in this way when so many others gave so much and they're not being recognised often, that really does, I think, stick in people's throat. I think a great many people will possibly agree with you. Time for our viewers, actually, to get in touch. GB Views at gbnews.uk. Annalise, if I can just ask you, um, well, first of all, congratulations. Um, Labour won the by-election in Erdington, but it was a very low turnout, wasn't it? Why do you think? Are people just fed up with politicians at the moment? Well, by-elections very often will be uh, conducted on a far, far lower turnout. Obviously, the national news isn't about there being an election. You know, I very much found that when I was out on the doorstep yesterday, and that's very often the case with a by-election. But what we did see happening yesterday was a really big swing towards Labour, a big swing towards Labour voters within that vote share. Yes, on a lower turnout, but still really, really big swing to Labour there. And I'm very, very pleased that we obviously have that continued Labour representation. We've now got the first ever black MP in the Midlands with Paulette Hamilton. I think she's going to do an excellent job and she'll be continuing really the work of Jack Dormy, which was so highly respected. She's a very, very similar kind of person, a very, very similar kind of MP. I can see that already as she's just started. I know, we all found it absolutely surprising when we were told she's the first black female MP in, the, in that constituency in the West Midlands. Extraordinary. Yeah, I believe actually the first female black MP ever to have stood in a by-election, um, if I've got those statistics right. So really groundbreaking. Um, someone who has a very long history and expertise, actually, particularly in public health, which she worked on for a long time. She was a nurse for 35 years, came back during the COVID crisis to protect her local community within the NHS. So I'm really, really pleased to see that she has been elected this morning. She's got, a, she's got a bit of a history, though, of inflammatory language. Um, and she, she's talked in the past about whether an uprising, that's her term, might help black people more than democratic politics. 
Well, actually, that was one clip from one event that took place many, many years ago. It was taken out of context. You know, she's made clear that you know she apologises for any offence and also that uh, she regrets the use of some of the words that she used. So she's made that clear. And I would say, you know, this is one clip from, as I say, many, many years ago. Actually, I think people should look at her record of delivery. And when they do that, they see that she's worked very hard for all of Birmingham's communities. And I know she's going to be doing that as the local MP now for Erdington. Yes, and the, the hard work there starts today, doesn't it? Thank you very much for joining us. That's Annalise Dodds there, who's the Shadow Secretary of State for Women and Equalities.